Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan and again thank you for joining me on my channel. Okay so here's the 137 gallon tank that I'm going to be setting up in the next month or so. The sooner the better um, but uh, it's hard when you've got a system this big and you're relying on a number of moving parts, uh, some of which have yet to be delivered and others are working on stuff, but it's going to be a freshwater system, no longer a marine tank as it was in Northern California. I'm going to try and raise uh, exotic uh, high-end angelfish, if you will. I haven't decided exactly on which species. I'm now, um, thinking I'm going to refrain from the very, very challenging Altum Angel, the wild caught, unless I can get an F2 or F3, in other words, um, tank raised uh, babies from wild caught Altums that other people have acclimated into a aquarium setup. And, th and then I would love the Altum Angel fish, look them up, they're gorgeous. They can be so much bigger and more exotic and regal than any angelfish you'll see, period. But all of its much more hardier cousins are pretty special too. And so I'm looking at some of those as well. And I'll talk about that perhaps in another video when I've made my decision. That's what I'm leaning on right now. And then um, with them, I will also probably have a school of either um, dwarf rainbows or um, perhaps a tetra and then of course a slew of wonderful Corydora catfish. Okay so let's get closer. This is the hardscape that I've currently set up. Obviously it's uh, there's a reflection so obviously there's that and I beg your pardon I tried every kind of lighting but here we are. Uh, but you get the gist of it. I'm trying for an island um, aesthetic as opposed to the uh, hockey stick kind of aquascape where you go from a higher the higher piece of driftwood in the left and down and follow and then maybe have some more supporting structures to the right. Um, I looked at that hardscape as well and I've got pictures of it uh, and, and I'm kind of going back and forth but right now I'm leaning on the island. I've never done anything like that and I think it would be awesome. I would put um, giant jungle veil coming up to the left, perhaps some hygrophilia corombosa, the giant hygro, um, and then of course my favorite plant, the uh, pinta fetata, the hygro pinta, uh, because I can never say the second part of that uh, Latin phrase. It's, it ends up sounding like a philosopher from ancient times, hygrophilia pinta fetata, but uh, it's my favorite plant. I've got it in my other tanks. In a perfect world, I'd use cuttings for my other tanks to support this large one, but I'm gonna want um, bodacious specimens. I'm gonna not go obviously with teeny tiny um, starter plants, but try to get stuff in here that's mature and I can um, get lucky and have them immediately take hold and start doing what they need to do to prevent an incredibly toxic algae bloom, which is my biggest fear in a tank like this, which is not going to have um, this, the amount of plants that my smaller tanks have, just because I cannot um, do the maintenance on a 137 gallon planted tank along with the other tanks which are all in the fish room to the left there. This will be in our dining room um, here on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. And that looks out at Belmont Harbor which of course you can't see because it's dark but um, no direct sunlight will hit this. There will be ambient light all throughout the day so that gives me pause and I'm going to have um, two tuna kessels as they're called kessel hanging lights which will be in the canopy there. Uh, to give that glimmering effect and um, bring out those angelfish and this aquascape. Um, below it, as I said, I'm having a sump uh, built for me by the folks at Tank It Easy here in Chicago, an operation I haven't worked with before, but um, they 
had this tank built for me and so far so good. And I'm going to have a refugium down in there where I'm gonna keep a bunch of plants that will help with the algae and obviously the biological, chemical, and mechanical media, which uh, you would find in any filter system. Um, a sump is more like an aquarium below an aquarium and you just let the water go through the overflow back and through the sump and I don't mean to patronize you, but um, that's what happens. Anyway, what do you think of this hardscape? Um, I'm digging it. I'm obviously gonna add to it uh, more cereal stone. That's cereal stone, actually another word I can't ever say correctly, say that three times fast, cereal stone. Cereal stone, like you can't do it. Um, and that um, up there is some beautiful um, spider wood, the larger specimens. You can see the tags are still on it. Um, from SR Aquaristic in Elgin, Illinois. Although I sourced this wood from Ocean Design Aquarium, they in turn got it from SR Aquaristic. I'm lucky that I have this stone in this wood because for various reasons, the stone comes from China and there's a lot of problems um, with dealing with that country right now and their shipping and issues and so, SR Aquaristic and everyone else does not have good inventory of the stone uh, it, and that's a bit unusual so I'm lucky I have um, stock and reserve. I even have more than this and I'm going to um, bolster this aquascape with that. I'm trying to decide if I want to stay minimalistic around and just do sand, put some soil in there for the plants that'll be in and around the island and call it a day or should I add more um, smaller sort of sub islands to either the left right or both these are all the fun decisions that come with the hobby and I'm making them right now if anyone had a suggestion I'd love to hear it otherwise just thank you for watching and as always keep your hands in the tank